Recently, I started learning Japanese, and because of this, I wanted somewhere to do Japanese input on my system. Now, obviously, I could always go and buy a Japanese keyboard, and the same is true for any other language as well, but there's a much easier and much cheaper way to actually do this. So right now, I should just be writing my regular character, so I can write out something like Hello World, and then if I go and press Control Space, that will enable my I'm otherwise known as an input method editor. Now, this doesn't just work with Japanese, it works with any other language you can find an engine for as well. So I can write something out like this right here. And if I go and press enter, that will then paste that text into the window. Now, before you even think about typing in another language, even if you have a physical keyboard for that language and you're not going to be using an IM, is you need to make sure you have fonts available that actually have the symbols for that language. So some fonts you have might already have symbols from, say, Japanese or Chinese or any other language already available, but it's always a good idea to have a font specifically made for that language just in case there's any symbols that are actually missing. So in the case of Japanese, there is this page right here available on the Arch Linux Wiki, which has a list of fonts that you can actually go and use. So in my case, I've got the Adobe Source Han Sans-JP fonts, and also the Serif version as well. And I believe I've also gone and installed the TTF VL Gothic as well. You don't need to have all of these. It's going to be fine if you just have a Sans and a Serif font. Now, there are similar pages for other languages as well. So if you just look up Arch and then whatever language you want to see the fonts for, you'll see something very similar. But for today, I'm going to be focusing on Japanese. So over on my terminal here, what we're going to do is sudo pacman-s and then adobe-source-han-sans. And we should be able to autocomplete this. We'll have a couple of ones in here. So if you want the China one, I believe that is the Chinese one there. But we're just going to get the JP fonts and install that. And obviously also do the same thing, but this time for the Serif version as well. And once again, install that. And there you go. You should have everything you'll need. Obviously, if you're on a different distro, just check what the package is called on that one instead. Now, when I refer to IAM, I'm actually referring to two distinct components. So we have the input method framework and the input method engine. Now, the input method framework basically sits between the user input and the method engine and tells the engine what the user actually wants to do. So let's say that I write out something like Hitori. So right now it's going to give me the hiragana form, but let's say that instead of that, I actually want the kanji form. So the input method framework is going to say to the engine, hey, give me the kanji form instead of that, and then actually paste that to the screen. So we have four main choices we can go with. We can go with UIM, IBUS, FCITX, and FCITX5. Now, FCITX5 is basically just a newer version of FCITX, which is FCITX4, but it has some annoying changes, which I'm not really that big of a fan of. And as for the other ones, I have had literally zero luck actually getting UIM and IBUS actually working. So if you can get those working, feel free to use those. But in this video, I'm going to suggest using FCITX. If you want to use FCITX5 though, basically every package we install is exactly the same, except it's FCITX5 instead of just FCITX. The rest of the installation process is going to be exactly the same. Now, if you're using FCITX, what you're going to need to install is FCITX-IM and also FCITX-Config tool. Now, this second part is kind of optional, but it will make it a bit easier later. So, FCITX-IM is actually a group, and this includes FCITX, which is the main program we actually need, and then FCITX-QT5. If you literally never use Qt applications, you can just install this one directly. This basically just makes it so FCITX can actually be recognized inside of a Qt application. So let's just go and install this. And if you're using FCITX5 instead, don't have these both installed at the same time. But what you need to install is FCITX5. I guess you can have them both installed, but there's really no reason to actually do so. Basically, you get the exact same things. We get the config tool, we get FCITX5. But this time we actually need a GTK version as well because FCITX5 doesn't work with GTK applications without this plugin. Now next up we have the input method engine. So this part is highly, highly language specific. So if you're not going to be doing Japanese input, do not download what I'm going to download because it will not work for you. What you should do is go to the FCITX page on the Arch Linux wiki and then check what engines are available 
for the language you want to work with. So in the case of Japanese though, we have four main choices. We have Anthe, we have LibKKC, we have Mosk, and we have SKK. Now, I've tried out all of these except for SKK, and they're all pretty decent. At my level of Japanese, it's pretty difficult to tell which one is the best. Some people do like to argue over which one is. From what I've seen, they work pretty much the same. It's sort of just down to personal preference and the way you like to configure it. So, in the case of Mosk, it's based on Google's language conversion. Honestly, Google's language conversion is perfectly fine as long as you're not trying to do stuff at the level of Google Translate. At the level of individual words, it's basically perfect. It can also be personalized based on your history. So if you frequently use certain words like you have on your phone, it will remember the things you actually type. Also, it doesn't let you bind alt keys. I've sort of gotten used to not using alt bindings, but it was a bit of a problem when I first started using it. Also, the kanji conversion... From what I've seen, breaks if you switch between katakana to hiragana. If you start at hiragana, then try to convert into kanji, there's no problem whatsoever, though. I'm not really sure what the deal is there. I might just be doing something wrong, though. Anthe, on the other hand, is much simpler, and this is because it basically finished development about 11 years ago. Some people would call it abandoned. I would call it feature complete because there's not really any issue actually using it, and anything that is missing can be addressed by just downloading an extended dictionary to use, and there's plenty of those to work with. So, personally, I prefer using Mosk, but I did start out with Anthe, and I don't have any problem actually using it, so use whichever one you feel more comfortable actually using. So to actually go and install it, what we need to do is sudo pacman-s fcitx- and then whatever one we want to use. So in this case, we're going to use mosk, but if you want to try them both out, you can also go and install fcitx anthe as well. If you want to install them for FCITX5, it's the exact same name, except it's FCITX5 Moz and FCITX5 Anthe. So let's go and install those. And as we can see, I've already got them both installed. And there we go. Now, to make all of this actually work, we need to go and set a couple of environment variables. So in my case, I'm going to use my ZSH env. If you're using bash, use your bash profile. If you're using fish, I guess it's called your fish profile. I've never actually gone and checked those. So I guess technically on ZSH, you could use your Z profile, but this is the correct place you're supposed to use. So what we need to do is set a couple of variables in here. So the GTK underscore I'm underscore module, QT underscore I'm underscore module, SDL underscore I'm underscore module, and X modifiers. Now, if you don't use any applications that use the GTK library, the QT library, or the SDL library, you can leave those lines out, but there's no harm in including them anyway. In the case of X modifiers, this will include things like your terminal, unless it's like a GTK terminal. And what we need to set it to is at IM equals FCITX and all of the others just set to FCITX. Now, this is the one exception where you don't put in FCITX5. It is just FCITX. And then you can either reboot your system or what you can do is just go and source that file. So source.zshm or bash profile or fish profile, and that will go and set those values. And we should also go and add the locale for the language we're using as well, just in case there's any programs that don't play nicely with that language without the locale being set. So what we need to do is go into our slash etsy slash locale dot gen, and go obviously use your pseudo password for this because it's going to be a root file. And obviously, like with the input method engine, this will depend on what language you're actually working with. So in my case, I'm going to look for ja underscore jp dot utf dash eight, utf eight, pretty much just uncomment that line. And the same is going to be true for whatever other language you're working with as well. So just go and find that line and then uncomment that. You can go to the Arch Linux wiki and find what each of the locales actually mean. So let's just go and save this now. And then if we do sudo locale dash gen, that will then go and generate the locales. Give it a second. And there we go. And now we're finally at the point where we can start up the program. So using your favorite auto start method, personally, I like to do a lot of stuff inside of my uh, my window manager. So in this case, I'm starting up FCITX-D, and that's going to start it up in its daemon mode. And then I'm just forking that into the background. You can also start it up as like a system D process and various other things. But this for me is just the easiest way to do it. So once we've done that, all we need to do is go and start up the application, and if we have a system tray, you'll notice there is a little icon in your system tray up here. 
if you don't have a system tray, that is why we downloaded FCITX-config tool, because this is another way that you can go and access what is in this here. From here, you can go and mess around with various configuration things, which you're probably not going to have any reason to touch right now. The one thing you will want to configure is the input method here. So I've already gone and removed Moz from the list here. But what you need to do is go and click on this plus here and then click on the tick here because if you don't, it's only going to show things for the current language you're on, which isn't really that useful as a default setting. So if you just go and search for mosk or whatever input method you're actually using, then you can actually go and add that to the list. Now, once you do that, if you press control space, you'll notice that when you press control space, it will switch you between English and then whatever keyboard you decided to use as well. Now, at least on Arch Linux, when you install FCITX, you really don't get any interesting looking themes. So basically what you get is you get the dark theme here. So let me just click on that dark, which looks like this. It's perfectly functional, but the um, menu over here looks pretty terrible. We also get the default and the classic. They are just as bad. So we're going to try that again. This is a white version. It's fine. If you don't care about how it looks, it's fine to keep it like that. But I'm actually using a highly modified version of uh, Tomoshibi. It doesn't look at all like this out of the box. Basically, it looks a bit more like the Ubuntu theme. But I've gone and heavily modified it to make it fit within my theme. And I might leave a link to it down below as well if you want to use it. One thing to specifically note about Mozk is it defaults to Kana input. So when you actually type, it's going to basically convert every single key press on your keyboard into what it would be if it was a Japanese keyboard instead. So if you prefer to do phonetic input, which is what I prefer to do, go to your configuration tool and then set this value right here. So the input mode to Romaji. So if I set this to Kana, I'll show you what I mean. Let's say I type right here. So as you can see, it's not actually showing the English symbols I'm pressing. It's just converting them directly to what they would be on a Japanese keyboard. That, I think, would be fine if I actually had a Japanese keyboard. But as it stands, I don't. So phonetic input is considerably easier for me. And I'm already not that quick of a typist anyway. So I'd much rather just work with what I already have. So hopefully that gets you started typing in another language. I will do a follow-up video where I specifically talk about typing inside a Mosk because there are some weird peculiarities that do make it a little bit different from working with something like SKK or Anthe. But for now, this should be enough to get you started. So before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Andre, Nathan, David, Montezar, Will, Chica Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Pitity, Tony, Tushar, and all my $2 supporters. If you'd like to support, work them in links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, Libra Pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.